What's up, everybody? Hopefully you guys can hear me and see me. <laughs> Brian Chambers, Ethan RC, Eddie K, Tim Smith, EQ, how are you guys doing tonight? A little bit later start than usual. Grandma watched the kid tonight, and me and the missus went out for a little bit, and uh, don't get to do that much. Got home a little bit later than anticipated, but we're here. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's having a good weekend. It's actually pretty gorgeous here in Indiana, other than a little bit of wind. It was a nice day. It's supposed to be even better tomorrow. 73. It's going to be awesome. Might even get to get some flying in. But we'll be doing a lot of flying at the end of next week. So, well, mid to end of next week. All right. It's 11 o'clock already. Holy smokes. I won't keep you guys too long tonight. Yeah, Stuka. This is one of my... Uh... Hey, Michael, what's going on, buddy? For shizzle, my nizzle. That's for shizzle. Yeah, I did get my belly full, man. That's for sure. A little too full. I need to cut back. Need to cut back. You like have a kid and you eat too much now and all I do is gain weight. My dad told me that would happen. He said once once you have a kid, you're gonna start gaining dad weight. And he wasn't lying. No. Yeah, this is my bigger stuka. Uh -huh. This is actually the uh, uh, Phoenix Stuka. Couldn't remember the name there for a second. Had a brain fart. Yeah, so I got this thing out in Cali. Actually, bought it off of a guy. I never had a chance to fly it. I uh, I got it, and then he said it flew good and everything, which I'm sure it does. But I haven't had a chance to fly it because I started to go through it, and the gas lines were bad and all types of stuff. So I went through the whole thing and redid a bunch of stuff and the gas lines and all that good stuff. And so, yeah, I'm going to actually try uh, try to do my maiden on it this coming week at Bama. But it has Futaba in it, and I'm a Spectrum guy, so I'm taking out this the Futaba receiver. I'm going to put in one of these uh, older AR-810s, 8010s that, that I had laying around. Hey, Jeff and Laura, Alabama. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see everybody tonight. Kind of a late night, sorry about that, but so yeah, it's kind of tonight's plan, I guess, is pop a receiver in this bad boy. It's pretty late, so we won't stay on too long tonight, but I gotta get some of my batteries out of here. What size prop? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. <laughs> I can pop off the nose cone. That's a good question. I think it's like an 18.8, but I'm not 100% certain. Futaba servos, uh, I think it's high techs in this one. Yeah, all high tech, the 645s. I've had those in quite a few planes. They, they do all right. I don't know if this little kit I have here at the moment has a big enough Allen. Well, that certainly isn't the size. Uh -huh. Oh, that's on there. That's not coming off. I cranked that down a little bit too good. I think it's an 18.8 though. I can't see in there to, to see exactly what it is. But I think when I put it back together, it was an 18.8. I gotta take the spinner off and the cowling and all that anyways, because I'm probably gonna have to do some adjustments to it anyway, but we'll tackle that when it comes along. Yeah, yeah, they're high techs, Michael. They're all high techs, so. 
I'm glad I found my spare receiver though, because uh, I was about to tear one out of. I have a Arrowworks Extra 300. It's about the same size as this. Uh, I was about to tear it out of there, but now I don't have to. I can't get any of this to shut though, so I'm just going to put that back over there. Nicholas Griffith, what's up, buddy? I'm surprised you're still awake, man. Ain't past your bedtime? Alrighty. Well, let's dig into this bad boy. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. I shouldn't have put uh, the fuel tank and everything back in it like I did. I bought a brand new fuel tank for this, new lines. You could tell it sat for a while, especially out in the desert. That's not good on these things. And I'm hoping I can read all of his markings here. I'm sitting down for this. There's, I ate entirely too much. I'm surprised there's 13 of you in here tonight. It's pretty late already. I guess it is Saturday though, so. I have some fun here. What you all think about that, uh, that new little UMX F86 that came out? Looks pretty rad. I still have the little UMX MIG. I might have to get that F86 just for the heck of it. Man, I should have brought a servo tester because I can't read what any of this stuff says. No, there's a Tim Smith, there's a DLE 20 in this one. Say those do sound good though. Michael said we have no line. <laughs> nah. There's always time in life to talk airplanes. Mike Nolan, how you doing, buddy? I said lunchtime Sunday here. Holy smokes. Yeah, I forgot. You guys are pretty far ahead of us, aren't you, out there? Lunchtime, lunchtime. Yeah, real good motors. Yeah, I like DLE. I have DLE and well, so there's a DLE 20 in this. That's what this came with. But I also have a DLE 20 in my uh, my Arrowworks Extra, and then I have that DLE Twin 40 in my Big Extra, and then I have a DLE Twin 60 for my Big Cub. I do like DLE. I'm kind of a sucker for DLE. Spencer. <laughs> uh, don't make that man have a heart attack. Jeez Louise. <laughs> All right. Man, this is a lot of rigmarole to go through. I'll tell you what. And whoever had 
had this before me labeled stuff in numbers, which really doesn't help me, especially since I switched to Spectrum, because none of the numbers are going to be the same as Futaba, I don't believe. <laughs> Getting ready to break out the bingo sheet? Yeah. <laughs> man, I save that kind of stuff for Dave, man. He's good at it. He's got a lot more patience than I do when it comes to that stuff. He's got a pretty good little show, though, going on, though, on Sundays. I like that little show, man. It's pretty good production and stuff. He's got all types of stuff. Fog machine, all that good stuff. Uh, no, or, yeah, this one, uh, does this one have a pull pull right? I can't see. No, it does not. Not, this one does not have a pull pull. But in both my extras have pull pull rudders. But this big girl don't. This isn't even, I, I don't think this is even the biggest Stuka that Phoenix makes. I think they make like a 95 inch Stuka too. This one's 75 inch wingspan. Should be a good little flyer though. I love Stukas. They're ugly as hell, but they're pretty cool. I want to 3D print some uh, dive horns for it. Just haven't got around to it yet. So we'll see. Like I said, I've had this thing for like literally a year and haven't had a chance to fly it or anything yet. It was in pretty bad shape though when I got it. So I'm glad it's looking good again because it was disgusting. It sat for a long time. It looked like it had like sand and dirt all over it, and I had to go through everything and clean it. And then the fuel lines were bad on it, and the gas tank was all nasty and had a bunch of gunk in it. And yeah, so I went through the whole thing. He said he flew it, but I, from the way it looked, he didn't fly it. Or if he did, he didn't fly it very much. Yeah, this thing was nasty. trying to see how he's got it set up there's a few ways he did stuff in here that I personally wouldn't have done but uh, to each their own I suppose <laughs> Come on, man. You said the plane's going to look great in paling the fence at Birmingham. <laughs> All right, Eddie K, man. Thanks for coming in, dude. We shall see you soon. Yeah, Spencer, it's a, it's a pretty nice looking plane. Yeah, it's not bad. I can't wait to fly it. It's been a while. I'm excited. I'm going to maiden this one down there, and I'm going to maiden my... Uh, big extra hopefully down there as long as all goes well i got it most of the way finished up yesterday so we'll see i gotta put a receiver in that one still 
uh, CG it, and I have to go back through and do a few other things, but not too much. We're almost there. Almost there. Yep. It's just trying to hunt down stuff and figure out what is what. So this... Some of this stuff I'm really confused on what he was trying to do here. So let's switch. So we ran that to there. Anyhow, wish I had something else to assemble tonight. What's up, Victor? How's it going, man? Busy day, eh? I thought I saw something on Facebook earlier. Didn't you get a new Bayhawk or something? Is that what I saw? Uh, Twin City, no, I didn't get the afterburner in the F-14 yet, no. I did not have a chance to uh, make it to the hardware store, unfortunately. BD-5 assembly, that's what's up, man. Who makes this big dog? Uh, this is uh, Phoenix, I believe. And then they make two of them. They make this one, which is the 75-inch wing, and then I think they have the bigger one. I think it's like a 95-inch wing. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 95 inches. But I love Stukas. They are pretty sweet. So the only thing I hate about buying, like, used gassers and stuff though like this is you got to deal with whatever the first person did do it and like some of this wiring and stuff in here now that i'm looking at it it's kind of questionable i went through the whole fuel system replaced the tank all the lines all of that good stuff and then replaced some balsa in here that was questionable and some of the links oh and then i had to fix the landing gear the landing gear were horrible i don't know how hard this guy landed but Man, he messed them up bad. I had to take them off and straighten out a bunch of stuff. And But yeah. Wiggle fingers. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, this is the Stu Phoenix Stuka on the bench. It's a big girl. You know, let me see right quick. I'm curious to see how much bigger the big one is from this. Because they make two of them. They're at uh, Tower Hobbies. Tower, even though they're owned by Horizon now, they still kept a lot of the good older brands. They're doing the old Soren to Savings deal, too.
Yeah, yeah, she's an old warbird, man. Like, I'm excited to fly it. I can't wait. I'm hoping it goes well. It should fly really good. Every Stuka I've seen has flown pretty darn good. This is actually, yeah, this is my first Stuka. I've never had a Stuka before. I do really badly, though. I should. I need to set up my 3D printer. I, I have it all ready to go. It just needs to be plugged into a computer, and I need to download some files onto it, but I want to print some dive horns for it real bad. I'm hoping someone already has a file out there that, for a big one, I can just, like, shrink down. Let's see here. Hey, Jackson RC, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you tonight, bud. Yeah, so they have this. This is the Phoenix 75 inch. The bigger one is the 61 cc gas or EP, and it's 94.4 inches. So this does have a big brother that's massive. That'd be pretty badass to see. This one's really not too bad on price. The ARF is, they're in stock right now at Tower. They're uh, $399.99, so 400 bucks, which isn't too bad. What's a plane like this usually run? Yeah, so the, the ARF itself is 400 bucks. Then the motor is probably around another three or three. 50 for the DLE 20. I'm not 100% positive. I can look that up real quick too. And then your servos. Servos I think are generally right around 35 or 40 bucks a piece. And you need, uh, let's see, one, two, four, six, seven. You need eight of them. So. Yeah, if I had it, you're probably right around 900 bucks all said and done. Mike Nolan's asking, anyone here got the Flex Innovations RV860E? Is it worth the money? I read that there are quality problems. Have they improved? That, I don't know. I actually didn't know there was quality problems with them. I really wanted one. They're pretty badass. I had the, uh, the foam version, and it was sweet. The big one, the glow-in-the-dark one. They, they have like a V2 of that one out now, too, I believe. But uh, I, I honestly, the first time I got a flex plane, I wasn't impressed with it until I flew it, to be honest with you. Like, I didn't think the quality was that great as far as, like, the foam and stuff on it. I thought it was kind of shoddy. But, uh, yeah, they're not too bad. Uh, they fly really good. Once you fly it, you forget about all of that. But um, I haven't seen any of the newer stuff. I don't know if they've improved any of that or not. It's been a long time, so... Better than Dynam, though. <laughs> Those fools are trying to make a comeback with V2 stuff that's three years old. Oh, that is the one you said? Yeah, man, uh, the one I had was crappy. But it flew fantastic once... Like, I, I mean, nothing electronically was wrong with it, really. But uh, just the foam quality kind of sucked. But it flew awesome. Once you fly it, you forget all about it. I think uh, Ryan's got a video of that on his channel somewhere. I took it off, and <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I didn't tighten the wheels uh, wheel nuts good enough. I, I don't know. I must have just been in a rush or something. Then go back and check them or what, and... I took off that darn plane and the wheels came off of it and I landed it with no gear. <laughs> that's I think that's still on his channel, I'm not sure, but I flew it. We flew it down in Winnemac. Um 
Jackson Darcy, I guess they exist, kind of. Kind of, but not really. I mean, uh, there's absolutely nothing new there. Um, don't carry Dynam at all, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think all they have is some old Dancing Wing stuff now. And that's probably about it. I don't know. I'm not, I don't think they have anything else, really. Um, they're kind of grasping at straws at this point, I believe. But I don't know. I stepped away from Bitco and all that noise, so I am not too sure, to be honest with you. Try to find out what these DLE 20s are, but they must be out of stock because I cannot find the stupid things anywhere. Let's try this a different way on here. I need to set it up so you guys can see what I'm looking up on the computer here, but that's a lot of rigmarole right now to do. Yeah, yeah, it happens, Jackson. It was good while it was good, and then it wasn't while it wasn't. <laughs> but I have a feeling in the next year or so you guys will see some cool stuff not from them but from other places or another place I guess I should say Man, ever since they changed their site, I could not find a darn thing on it. Oh, yeah, Wiggle Fingers. He said it, Brian. It just depends on age, condition. Yeah, you meant used. My bad, man. I was thinking like new altogether. Um, I think I paid. 300 bucks for this, three or 350, somewhere around there, I can't remember. Tim Smith says the DLE is 279 new, yeah. So yeah, I got this for a pretty good deal considering the plain new is 400, the DLE is 279, yeah, that's through Horizon. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it just depends. Like, really, if you want like a cool gas or start going to swap meets, you can usually find stuff at a decent deal at a lot of the swap meets or if they sometimes talk them down. Any, any of you guys go to the Toledo swap meet? That was, I think, last weekend. I wanted to go really bad, but I did not have a chance to make it out there. Something I've gone to since I was a kid. It's pretty badass, usually. Charles, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, the plane here is a Phoenix Stuka. I'm in the process of putting a Spectrum receiver in it. had Futaba in it. Um, but i am got it pulled apart, and I this was one I bought off secondhand. Uh, had replaced fuel line, gas tank, a couple other little odds and ends here. Uh, but, yeah, I just got the receiver pulled out, and I'm seeing some of the way he did this wiring and I'm questioning whether I should put this receiver in or redo some more stuff on it. <laughs> so, I mean, most of the wire looks all right. It's just the way he ran it is kind of really odd. And I don't know, he's got this plate built in here and I can't see underneath it and it's kind of driving me a little nuts. Oh, Jack's a couple guys from your club went up. That's awesome. I'm glad to see you guys are still traveling to that place. It's uh, it was always it's always been an awesome show, and then I know there was talk of it going away a year or two ago, and they somehow made it come back to life. I don't know how, but uh, I remember when I was a kid, that was like the show to go to. It was unbelievable. I mean, every vendor you could think of there, little flying area inside, and. It was two stories. I mean, they had guys all the way up on the top story, and it was, it was huge back in the day. That was an awesome show. I don't know what it's like anymore. It's been years since I've went. It's actually been six years since last weekend since I went. Yep. 
Yep. Anyhow. I'm just looking at a few things here. Yeah, so that's why everything's looking weird to me. So this dude wired in like his own style quick connector in the back here. And uh, I don't know why, I'm just now noticing that. That's why it looks so goofy underneath there. Okay. I need to get another camera so I have like one behind me, like showing what I'm doing. So that way you guys see both. I need to figure out how to do that one of these days. Yeah, Jackson, let me know a date, man. I would not, I love warbirds. Wouldn't mind coming to an event down there. Or over there, I should say. There's a lot of events I have planned this summer. Now that I'm back here in the Midwest. There's a lot of them on the West Coast. Um, but I just never got a chance to make it to any of them when I was living out there. Uh with the hobby shop just had too much going on to ever get to him I, I didn't even get to make it to our own show at our couple shows at our club out there man some of these are a pain in the butt to get out of here And then I also plan on going to uh, Oshkosh this year, hopefully. We'll see how things turn out. But as of right now, I'm planning on it. Got that out of there. The dude's makeshift receiver tray here. Alright. Now I can see. Any other shows going on here soon? There's none that after this one. I don't think there's any that I know of until June 7th and 8th. You got uh, Jet Jam, I think, is the 7th and 8th down in southern Indiana. And then you've got uh, 
our Sea Fest, I believe, from Horizon. That's the seven and eight. I was gonna go to our Sea Fest too, and then I got bummed out because I guess there's like no more flying there. Like only the Horizon guys are allowed to fly there, so that's kind of a bummer because that was always one of our favorite events. But I get it. that's a lot of liability. I mean, I don't know if anybody. Any of you guys ever been to it, but it's, it's pretty massive. There's a ton of people there, and it's kind of like for, like, their community, you know, around there. So you get a lot of, like, outsiders that come just to watch. And I guess, I guess, it's pretty big, you know, uh, liability if someone that doesn't know what they're doing flies it into the crowd or something stupid. Looking at this, I might be better off just uh, cutting my losses and using doing it how this guy did it. Trying to read some of this stuff's kind of a pain too. Wonder. I always lose my darn checker, but it turns into a servo tester too. I just don't know. There it is. I just don't know if I have a darn battery to char or get it to work. Give me one so Oh, you know what? Yeah, I do right here. This should work. Warbirds over. Hagerstown, Maryland, 725 through 730. Uh, let me see. That might be the same time as Oshkosh. Yeah, so Oshkosh is the 22nd to the 28th. If uh, if I don't end up going to Oshkosh, I'll definitely come to good old Hagerstown. I love Warbirds. This year at Oshkosh, they're going to have both uh, Fifi and Doc, and they're supposed to fly together, I believe, on the 24th. So that should be pretty sweet. Pretty cool to see. All right, so let's see if I can get this thing. In servo tester mode. Oops, not that. Well, that must be an aileron or something, because I didn't do anything. That one didn't do anything.
Well, so far I struck out on those three, so those almost go to the wing. Let's see what these are here. So that's, that's my ignition switch there. All right, there's throttle. All right, so this one's throttle. So that's good. plugged in. Yeah, Tim Smith, that's pretty awesome, dude. The This little guy here, the Spectrum deal, the battery checker, servo tester, charger, phone, do anything all in one, is worth the money. I have two of them. I, I love this thing. And I have to, I always lose this damn thing though. Like I carry it on me so much, I forget it in pant pockets or here or there or wherever. And actually the other one I have is MIA at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I love this thing. Absolutely love it. I will never use another servo checker ever. Or battery tester. <laughs> Hey, what's this one? Hey, we got ele or, yeah, elevator. Sweet. So, elevator. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm guessing this other one is rudder that he has zip tied here. Yeah. Alright, so that one's rudder. Alright, cool. Well, we got three of them figured out so far. What's up, Greg? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. Are you going down to Bama, or was it you that had... You got your guys' club is doing this, uh, something on that same weekend. I can't remember. All right, so none of these work, so I'm guessing. Um, where did that go to? I just had something and I don't know where it went. Oh, ignition wire, there it is. Yeah, your club hasn't, even, that's what I thought. I couldn't remember though exactly. Well, we'll miss you down there, man. So, that's battery, I know that. So I'm thinking this is aileron and two flat. 
and I can't put my darn wings on because my the spar for this is with all my other spars in my trailer, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, hmm. Legend Hobby, yeah, man, I've been checking out Legend Hobby actually lately. I want a really big zero. I've wanted a big zero forever. But uh, last time I checked, they didn't have the white one available, and that's kind of what I want. <laughs> I mean, I'd settle for a green. I don't know why. I just like the white. That's at least last time I checked. But, yeah, I'd love to have that big zero they have. They make some really cool stuff, though. The Sky Raider is pretty badass that they have, the big Sky Raider. I saw RC Geeks is amazing. It looks like it flies awesome. Someone needs to make a big Sky Raider again. HSD did a long time ago, and it was freaking sweet. But no one's made one in a long time, so hopefully we'll see one of those one of these days. Because I'd love a big Sky Raider to come back out. There's a couple of them. Yeah, Balsa USA, yeah. I just don't feel like building anything anymore, unless it's an ARF. <laughs> I don't know if Balsa USA has any ARFs, I don't know. As bad as that sounds, I built so much that when I was a kid, like, now all I want to do is fly. And it sucked when I was younger, because it was hard to afford this stuff, and then you build something like all damn winter and then go out in spring and crash it like the first or second flight and then have to take it back to the workbench and fix it all and uh, I do not miss those days. That's before Expo was even a thing. I was flying on my old Futaba TX6A or whatever the hell it was called. I still have it somewhere and I have an old AM radio that I started off with way back in the day. Thing belongs in a museum. It's ancient. That new Trojan from Legend Hobby is pretty sick too. That uh, 1 6 scale, 82 inch wing. They have some pretty cool stuff though. Dang, big old B25. I'm just checking out Legend Hobby right now. Oh man, they got a sale going on on the Sky Raiders. I keep telling myself I don't need anything else though just because I have too many in the box that I need to build still. J Bell, how you doing bud? Said where is the fly in next week? So it's uh, in Birmingham, Alabama at Birmingham RC Club. Um, it's pretty awesome. You can register um, online on their website if they're not full yet. But it's uh, fly in and swap meet. It's uh, it's pretty sweet. It goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I believe. But it's it's a good show. Um, it's a lot more low-key than Bigfoot is. Um, Bigfoot every year down there is pretty awesome. Tons of people. Uh, Horizon, all them guys are down there. This year, I mean, I think Ali Machinsky and, and some of the Horizon people will be at, at Beham Jam. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, but, yeah. It's a good time. You should definitely come down. If you can make it, you should definitely come down. <laughs> Tim Smith said, yeah, sale. I haven't pulled yet, but close. <laughs> I know how that goes. I definitely know how that goes. Man, that big Razorback uh, P47 is pretty sweet that they have, too. That's a big chunk. Uh, oh, sold out. <laughs> of course. I was looking to see if they had that zero back in stock. Stack up the kits. Yeah, I know. Man, I need to build... I have a Hellcat, an old Hellcat, and the old... Uh, it's Great Plains or Top Flight 
uh, P51 I need to build still. One of these days I'll get around to it. Dang, yeah, they're still out of the darn white zero. I'd love to have that white zero. The green's not bad looking by any means, but man, that white's pretty cool. Man, and it's on sale right now. That's tempting. That's tempting. Ooh, and I have a motor for it too, because it's a 50 to 60 cc. Son of a gun. 86 inch wing. Man, oh man. That'd be a fun one. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Dang peanut gallery is going to get me in trouble, man. I hope my wife's not watching this. She's going to yell at me when I get done if she knows I'm looking at airplanes again. R.C. Rowland said, anyone not going to be ham can come to the event in northern Kentucky at his club. I think your club's only like a four and a half, five hour drive from me, Greg. Pretty sure. All right, come down there and fly with you guys one of these days. Yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff though on uh, good old Legend Hobby. Lots of cool stuff. They have some stuff you don't see very often too actually which is nice. Like the P26A P shooter like that's a pretty sick little plane. Like, you don't see those very often. It's got a pretty neat paint scheme on it, too. 71 inch wing. That's not bad. It's about the size of this. Pretty close. Uh, Brian Chambers. <laughs> Where is Bama Jam at going to be? So it's at uh, it's at Birmingham RC Club. Let me see if I can find a link real quick here for you, and I'll post it in there. All right, here we go. Give me one second. All right, hopefully that link there works for you. So that'll take you to the website. And on the website there, um, it has all the information for, for where it's at and when. Um, oops. So yeah, registration, or I'm sorry, uh, the event is April 18th to the 21st, and it's, uh, at Birmingham RC Field, which is in, uh, Gardendale, Alabama. But yeah, it's a, it's an awesome event, real fun. Uh, you definitely won't be disappointed if you come. The event starts in four days, nine hours, three minutes, and ten seconds. They got a countdown on here. And then also, if you want to pre-register, they have a, there's a little finger that you can just tap from your phone, and it'll take you right to the registration page. So, but yeah, it's a fly-in and swap meet. Should be a pretty darn good time. I'm not on their website too often, but their website's pretty darn good, actually. 
Really darn good. I don't know who does their website, but it's nice. For an RC club, it's real nice. Scott's working his magic over there. Pretty cool. Hopefully that link works for you. If it doesn't, let me know. I can try and drop another one in there for you, man. Yeah, so I got most of this figured out besides these three guys here, which I'm pretty sure one's an aileron because it goes to a Y split. And these two, I'm pretty sure, are flat because this one, I thought it was a 9, but I'm pretty sure it's an F written on it. And this one, I'm pretty sure an F's written on this one too. It's hard to tell. Oh, it's an LF, so left flap, I'm guessing, and right flap. And then aileron. So I'm guessing that's what those are. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm pretty sure. Come on. If I was smart, I wouldn't have just pulled these out of the damn. Futaba receiver, I would have marked them. Looked up what the Futaba receiver was and then marked them as I took them out, but I was not thinking when I did this. 63 inch chipmunk, what? That'd be sick. I heard there was a foam chipmunk in the works, but that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't know if it's true. And I'm not trying to give out any false information on who's doing it, if they are doing it. But that'd be a pretty sick little foam bird, too. Sorry, I'm just snooping. People talk about airplanes like I check them out sometimes. Especially I love chipmunks. I had one when I was younger. That's really not a bad price for that darn thing either. Oh, they got an 80 inch chipmunk too? Oh man. That's like old school though, GHC1. Man, that, that Pennzoil chipmunk though, that's sick. That's a nice little bird. That's like almost identical to one I had when I was younger. Fifteen CC. Yeah, Pennzoil one's badass, dude. Uses Hangar 9 Ultra Coat, so you know the covering's decent on it. Let's try and see what they call for. Also, a 55 two stroke, or a 72 four stroke, or a 15 to 20 cc gasser. Oh man. Maybe I should wreck this damn Stuka so I have a reason to buy a chipmunk. <laughs> Take all the guts out of this and put them in that. <laughs> Huh. Well, shoot. 
That's nuts. I should have never listened to you. I should have never got on this damn site. Now I'm not going to be able to stop looking at stuff. I got to get off of there. Got to get off of there. <laughs> yeah, that is a fat ass squirrel, Brian Chambers. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> I like the style of the aerobatic chipmunks, though. A lot more than like the military version. I wish they had that Pennzoil one in like a big dog, like 80 or 90 inch. I like big airplanes. <laughs> big ass chip. Now, all right, we're getting there as far as this goes. Oh, really, Michael Nolan? Huh, I did not know that, man. He said that Pennzoil Chipmunk was a model of the guy who died filming the first Top Gun. Interesting. I didn't know that. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Tim Smith said his name was Art Scholl and his dad knew him real well. I'll be darned. How, how'd he pass away? He, like, he literally passed away filming filming it? Like, something happened or what? That's the first I heard about that. That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, it's not cool, but it's cool that airplane's famous, I guess you'd say. Oh, he did crash filming. I'll be darned. That's nuts. Huh, that's pretty wild. I, uh, I've never really watched any of like, the behind-the-scenes stuff on Top Gun. I guess I should have. I probably would have learned that. That's a pretty, pretty interesting story. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. Man, I don't know why, but this thing's being a pain in the butt to get in here. There it goes. Man, some of these are hard to get in here. There. Alright, so that. Almost everything. So 
that's definitely battery. That bad boy goes right there. Well, our show was an air show performer. Flew the red, white, and blue chipmunk for years. Jay Bell asks when the best time to hit the swap is. Uh, so, for as far as swap goes, um, I'd say you want to be there Thursday and Friday for the swap. Um, Friday's probably the best day. Uh, but, like, Usually any swap meet, the earlier you're there, the better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I didn't participate in the one last year because I was living out in California at the time. But, uh, yeah, I'd say probably Thursday or Friday for the swap, buddy. Love the, uh, Jay Bell said he loves to fly his old chipmunk. Great flying plane. Yeah, they are, they are great flying birds. They're awesome. I'm excited to fly this thing. I am curious. I've seen a lot of guys flying at shows and stuff, and everybody's loved them, like the old Balsa USA stuff, like the kits. But I really want that big D7 from Hangar 9, too. That's a pretty sick plane. And I've seen some of those Horizon guys flying that thing on rails. Need some needle nose. Junkers, that's right. The good old junkers. I've never had servos uh, ends. Give me such a hard time getting them in. I think it's because this one had one of those stupid tabs on it a long time ago. See if I can file it down at all. This is not the best thing to be using on this. I should be using my little razor blade, but... Here in the next month or so, I should have a really nice area to film at and do the show. And I'll have all my tools and all that good stuff there, so... Just temporary for now. See if that helped out at all. Let's try to see who was out front. Someone walking their dog at midnight. Not get this darn thing to save me right now. It doesn't help that the wire is super short either, though. Ah. Come on, there it is. Holy smokes! I was a pain in the butt. Here's that one. And so I'm trying to find aux three. There's aux three. Aux three. 
This one's gonna not be fun either. Oh man, sorry to hear that, J Bell. Say so he lives about 160 miles away and may attend. Home field Magic Valley, which is about 45 miles away, has sadly declined and only has about six members left. Man, I hate hearing that. I hate hearing that kind of thing. That's sad. Uh, I hate seeing fields go, man, and decline like that. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Our hobby's grown in some ways as far as like people being able to get into it because it's a lot easier now. But uh, as far as some of our field zones staying open, it, it seems like it's starting to shrink a little bit. There's not as many as there used to be. It's, it's sad. Stuka is one of your dream planes. Yeah, it's, a, it's pretty sweet, man. This one's not too bad in price as far as getting them new. They're about 400 bucks for the R, but um, you, can, you can get smaller ones. I'm almost done with this darn receiver here. One more to put in. And we'll be crack a lacking. Ah. Some of these are a pain to get in here. I gotta kinda like get at a different angle. Because the wires are so short and I don't have any of my needle nose on me. to tuck everything away though because I still need to uh, make sure everything's going to the right spot puka <laughs> or puka <laughs> yeah you don't like these things do you I forgot about that they're ugly Been flying off and on for the past three to five years. Way easier to get into now and learn to fly. Yeah, it sure is. The only thing I don't like, honestly, though, uh, it, I mean, it's a, it makes it a lot easier for people to get in. I totally understand, but I hate safe. I think it's a, I think it's a good learning tool for a short period of time, but it's a horrible learning tool for a long period of time. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like people get too used to safe and then they never get off of it. I mean, there's some guys I've met that are flying jets and stuff and still have safe on them when really if you're flying a jet and whatnot, you probably shouldn't have safe, but, or be, at least be flying in it the whole time, I should say. I mean, having it is one thing to get you out of a pickle or if something happens, but if you're flying a jet the whole time and safe, you're not really learning much. But it's a good stepping stepping stone but that's all that's the only thing I like about it not a complete hater on it but Tim Smith said, might want to put a new prop on that and balance that slum bitch. Yeah, I uh, I definitely probably will do that. I'm probably going to, when I get down to Bama, I'm probably going to make a trip to uh, Model Box and 
see if he's got any props for it. This one's actually not in bad shape, but it would be a bad idea to clean it up and put it on a balancer to make sure it's still uh, where it needs to be. It actually doesn't look like anybody ever balanced this damn thing. It looks like it's just, oh yeah, there's some nicks on it down at, towards the base here on this side. But, yeah. Safe can get you in trouble. I like using safe just in case you lose orientation, but not flying with it. My old eyes need help. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, totally, totally. Yeah, it's good to have, like, as a safe fault, but <clears throat> totally agree. It can uh, can get you into trouble if, you, if you're not, if you're used to just using safe. But, yeah, other than that, it's a... It's a good learning tool and something good to have if, if you need it, for sure. Going somewhere. I just noticed that the like Stuka's been in the way the whole time. You guys can't even see what I'm doing here. <laughs> Oops. Just trying to make sure I got everything here. Oh, there it is. So that's that. Tomorrow I'll need to power it on and see if everything works properly. But it should, I think. Hopefully. Programming it might be difficult, but we'll see. I know I got one thing right because my on off switch is working for the power here. As you can see, maybe, maybe not. So that's a good sign. But yeah, we'll see how she goes after I do the rest of it. And then for this girl, I'm running two 2200 2S life packs. They're 6.6 .6 volts. Which is probably more than enough to power everything. Probably only need one realistically, but more is better sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Tim Smith, I did eat too much, man. I'm, I'm like feeling it too. I'm telling you what, I had way too much to eat. I don't know if you guys have haciendas where you're at or if you've ever heard of them, but man, they make a pretty darn good wet burrito. And I ate too much of that darn thing. That's all I can tell. That and they fill you up with chips and salsa before you even get your food. So it, uh, they get you pretty good. I didn't expect us to get home so late. I was kind of worried. I was like, oh man. By the time I start the show, it's going to be late, late. But it worked out all right. All right. Just trying to get some screws I had laying around here.
Bada boom, bada bing. That should do it for that girl. Oh, and I fixed my latch a little bit ago, so that's good to go. Yeah, that's the big dog Stuka. The, the puka, puka, duka. Hey, Fred Baron, how you doing, buddy? I need to get out and fly that little Draco again. I wish Horizon would send me to my darn 4S batteries I ordered a month ago. But hopefully they'll come back in stock soon. I was kind of mad because I ordered when they were in stock and I still didn't get the darn things. They must have oversold, which I guess is probably pretty easy to do. It is what it is. Time is it? Twelve thirty? Twelve thirty almost. Probably won't stay on too much longer. Big day tomorrow. Big day. Oh, so you guys uh, looking at getting anything new anytime soon? I still keep checking out that new decathlon from Horizon. That looks like a pretty good one. Looks fun. I do like decathlons. Greg, is that that dancing wing uh, albatross you got there on your cover photo? That's a good looking bird, man. Tim Smith, yeah, I'm hoping, man, at some point I can. Uh, got a lot of stuff to do with the fam and getting stuff ready for next week. Like I have a ton. I'm, I'm leaving either real, I'm leaving either leaving late Tuesday night or super, super early Wednesday morning. So I'm trying to get everything done and. Uh, I gotta get my trailer ready and get some planes ready. I'm gonna take some stuff down to swap also. So we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping. See what the winds are gonna be tomorrow. I'm hoping I'll get out and fly a little bit. I want to get some film done. So we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. <laughs> I probably won't be flying until, let's see here, what time does the wind calm down tomorrow night here? Eh. There's a chance tomorrow night at like 6 p.m. it calms down. Yeah, it says wind gusts up to 31 miles an hour tomorrow, so that's going to be kind of, uh, that's going to kind of suck to film in, but according to the good old weather channel at about 6 p.m., it drops down to seven miles an hour with gusts only up to 11. So I'll probably get out in the, in the late evening, I'm hoping, and have some fun and do some filming at the same time. I'll probably just hit up the school again. I want to film that, uh, I got the Cougar done, but I want to get the, uh, oops. I want to get the EC1500 done, the new one. I haven't flown that yet. Kind of excited for that. And might fly something else. I don't know what that that cougar though, man. That thing is badass. That that thing is sick. It's a little rocket ship too. Man, is that thing fast? I love it. And I was I was a little bit skeptical of that stock gyro from Freewing, but it did really good. And I I didn't mess with it at all. I guess you got to have a programmer to like turn it up, turn it down. They had it pretty dialed. I didn't have to mess with it at all. It was real rock solid. And. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the video or not, but that was like my fourth flight on the on on that jet, and uh, I had the maiden filmed and everything, but ended up having no sound on it. <laughs> my wife's my camera lady, and uh, she caught it right at the very end. Noticed the little deal wasn't working on the screen, but um, yeah, my battery died on my darn microphone, and I didn't realize it, so. 
I shot it again the next day, and it was a good video. I mean, I flew the heck out of it. She had a hard time keeping up with it a little bit, a little shaky, but she did a good job for what I was doing. It, a lot of times when you're filming these things, you don't want to go super fast or do really dumb stuff because it's hard for the camera person to kind of keep an eye on it, especially if they don't know, like, the pattern or what you're going to do. Uh, but she does a good job, man. Bob McNeil, how you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, it is a good looking Stuka, Mike. It's it's pretty sick. I'm excited to fly it. I can't wait. I hope it flies good. It's still got some desert sand in it. <laughs> Pilot Ryan said, right now he's got his eye on the Dynam Primo. Looking to move, move, move up in the hobby. Yeah. Dynam Primo is where it's at, dude. Uh, if you master that Primo, I mean, you can fly anything. Anything. <laughs> Those good old foam wheels. They actually don't have the foam wheels anymore, but man, they used to have literally foam wheels on that Primo. Twenty-year-old J. Bell said, "I have a twenty-year-old chip hide, double vision arf. It's been in the barn for a while. Afraid to finish it, then I'll have to fly it." Yeah, I know how that goes with some of them. I know how that goes. Yeah, Paul, the Stuka's Stuka's pretty sick. I like it too. Like I said, I'm gonna get some dive horns 3D printed for. It. I'm gonna bust out my 3D printer and print some dive horns. But this thing actually has some pretty legit gauges in it too. The only thing that I'm gonna else I'm probably going to do to this one too, which is fairly easy, is uh, I can get it spun around here, this thing's big, Whoa. is I need a gun coming out of that back window for the tail gunner. I was wondering how those guys shot something and were like, if it was me, I'd be scared to death of shooting off my own tail. Because if I was like in the moment and had people attacking me and I was like shooting, you know, tracking them, how in the hell do you, like, not hit your rudder in, in the moment, you know? Like, I'm sure they train for that stuff, but, man, that probably would be nuts. Yeah, Mike, the, the Cougar does rip. It's it's awesome. I love it. It's a, it's a fun burn. I was real comfortable with, with it right off the get-go. Someday, maybe one day. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. That Stuka's a... Or, I mean, that Primo is uh that's, that's quite the accomplishment. You start sending one of those, you know. Paul McNeil said, Bobby, who makes the Stuka you have on the show right now? So this is the Phoenix uh, Stuka. You can get them at Tower Hobbies. They're in stock right now. Uh, they're right about 400 bucks for the ARF. Uh, DLE 20 in this one and high-tech servos. Um, nice little bird, actually. And when I bought this one, I got this out in California. Just never had a chance to go through it. Guy said it flew really good, and he flew it all the time and all this. But when I ended up getting it from him, it had a ton of dust on it and stuff. But I went through the fuel system. I replaced the tank, all of the lines. Um, checked out the carb on the motor and everything. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, replaced a couple of the linkages that were kind of gnarly. The gear was destroyed almost on this thing. I redid all the gear on it. Um, but, yeah, I got a good deal on it. I got I think I paid like 300 or 350 bucks for this thing. I can't remember. But it came with the plane, you know, motor, everything. And then I also got an extra fuselage for it. I don't know why it came with an extra fuselage or why he had it. I'm not sure. But, yeah, so not, not a bad deal. But, yeah, if you want a new one, you can get them off tower for a decent price. You... You'd probably be right around eight or nine hundred bucks if I had to guess all said and done with you know motor servos and receiver and whatnot. But it looks fairly easy to build. So
Yeah, sure, they had to block on the guns to make sure they did not shoot the tail. I sure in the heck would hope so, friend. I mean, because <laughs> I know if I was in the moment, I probably would do something stupid like that. Be bailing out of my own plane because I shot the damn tail off. That would suck. <laughs> You look at some of the innovations, though, made to airplanes in World War II, and it, some of it's just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I got to see a lot. When I was living out in Cali, I got to see a lot of the Warbirds fly every weekend, too. They were taking out T-28s, T-6, uh, Stearman. P-51, like literally every weekend at Palm Springs Air Museum, they'd fly those girls all the time. All the time. Yeah, it is. That is a big spinner. It's probably three and a half, four inches if I had to guess. I mean, I'm trying to put my hand for comparison on it, but yeah, it's pretty big size. I'm excited to fly this darn thing. I've had it for so long, I'm, I, want, I need to fly it. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to see all you guys uh, next weekend. Because I'll, I'll be doing the show next weekend too. We'll, we're going to do it live from the field down in Bama. So... We will still be on next weekend. And I'll be popping in periodically doing some lives from the phone and stuff, walking the flight line and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. Should be a good time. Like I said, the, the B-Ham Jam is more of like a relaxed show. It's not like Bigfoot where it's like super big. Um, it's just a lot of the homies kind of hanging out, having fun. Uh, a lot of shenanigans go down at nighttime. I, I bought some stuff for nighttime shenanigans already. I brought, bought some glow sticks and some other stuff. Some of the stuff I can't give away because then it'll ruin the surprise when, yeah, when people get hit with it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> can't wait to drop some stuff out of the B-25. I don't know if I can fly the B-25 tonight. I don't know about the lights on it, but the EC-1500 is a really good one to fly at night on just the nav lights. So I plan on dropping some goofy stuff out of that at people. The Stuka didn't have an interrupter on the gun. Ah, really? Tim Smith said Tom Cruise has his P-51 at Planes of Fame. Really? I was right by, I wasn't too far from Planes of Fame. I didn't know that. I'll be darned. Ah, Paul, you got a Phoenix Hobby Zero, dude? I was just talking about Zeros earlier before you got in here. I've been jonesing to get one of the Legend uh, Legend Hobby Zeros, but I wanted the white, and it's been out of stock for quite a while. They only have the green, but I'd probably settle for a green. They're on sale right now. But Michael Nolan said, uh, we're talking about the Stuka here. They interviewed a gunner, and he said, no, just don't shoot your, <laughs> your own tail off. <laughs> I'll be darn, that's crazy. I'd be the dude to do it. I'm telling you right now. I'd be up there chilling, shooting around, and definitely take that thing off in the heat of the moment, probably. Yeah, good old Chino, that's right. Yeah, Fred, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be going live, yeah. <clears throat> definitely be going live quite a bit. I'm excited. Yep, good old Chino. Hmm. I don't know if you've ever been to the Palm Springs Air Museum, but that's a pretty awesome museum, too. I love how they fly constantly at that museum, too. Every weekend, man, I, I used to love it. The P-51 would fly over or the Stearman. And I was, like, right in line with the airport or the runway or something. Cause, I mean, they'd come over my house constantly. Constantly. 
We went there for the flower drop last year too. That was pretty cool. They dropped a ton of flowers out of the B25. That was pretty neat. Oh, you got the Silver Zero. Man, I don't know if I know what that one looks like. They still still sell that thing? I'm going to have to look that up right quick. Good old Tower Hobbies. Phoenix makes some good stuff too, man. I've been happy with the, all the Phoenix stuff I've had over the years. Oh, Tim Smith. Yeah, so you have been there. Oh, sweet. I lived like 15 minutes from that museum. It was great. Paul McNeil said he saw the Nola Gay B-29 at the Chino Museum when he was a kid. Ah, that's sick. I think the Nola Gay, um, I'm pretty sure that's at the Dayton Museum now. I think. I'm not 100% certain, but I think it is. That'd be a cool one to see, man. I'm excited to see both of the big big girls uh, at Oshkosh this year. I mean, seeing those two big B-29s fly together should be pretty awesome. Ah, oh, now I see what zero you're talking about. I see it now. That thing's sick. Looks like it has a ton of nice detail on it. Man. Hopefully next week, too, I'll have this... If we're not doing too much crazy stuff during the show next week, I'll try to... I have to figure this out so I can pull up... It's easy to do. I just don't want to do it with you guys here because it might take me a second. But uh, So you guys can see what I'm looking at on the internet. I'll be able to pull it up on the screen here. But Yeah, that's a nice little zero fall. Hey, they still sell the Escapade? Holy smokes, man. I had that when I was a kid. That's crazy. I didn't know they still sold that darn thing. I have the big 30cc Escapade, which I'm looking for wings for, if anybody knows where I can find a set of wings for that thing. I uh, took a car off a ramp and put a car right through one of the wings for it. <laughs> so that still hasn't flown. It'll happen. It will happen. The Nola Gay... 29 is now at the Mas oh is it really the Smithsonian huh did not know that man you guys ever fly a chaos like, I just was looking at planes on here the chaos was like my first low wing plane when I was younger when I was learning and everything that's a sweet bird too I didn't know they still sold that Mine was a kit, but now they have them in an ARF. Reminiscing on the good old days now. Ooh, they got that Hangar 9 P-51 back in stock, too. The big 60cc -er. That's a sick-ass bird, too. Yeah, they have a lot of stuff in stock again. The Ryan STA is pretty sweet, too. They have those bad boys back in stock. I always like that plane. <laughs> he said, oh my god, the chaos, I hammered one. <laughs> Wild Bill, what's up, dude? Yeah, the chaos is awesome, man. I love the chaos. I keep looking at this one, I'm like, man, I need to get another one of those bad boys. This is a 62-inch, too. Mine was a lot smaller than that. I think mine was only like a 50-inch wing that I had. It was a... I had a little uh, OS 40 on that bad boy man this thing's sick oh yeah 61 two stroke to a 91 four stroke put like a 91 Sato on that man It'd be sweet 
I might have to build another little nitro plane. I haven't had one in so long. I have the motors and stuff sitting here for it. 250 bones, that's not bad. A little 60 size chaos. I love that chaos. The chaos was awesome, man. I learned a lot on that plane. A ton on that plane. Same with the escapade, though. That little 40 size escapade. I learned a ton on that thing, too. A ton on it. Great Plains. I can't believe they're still branding that. I wonder who really makes that. Because I haven't seen anything Great Plains of her ever. On the Escapade. Yeah, Mike. The Great Plains Escapade. Yep. I didn't know they even still made anything until just now. I'm looking here on my phone and the they do make a Great Plains Escapade. I'll be darned. I didn't think Great Plains was even around anymore. Ooh, Spacewalker. Phoenix makes a nice little 63 inch Spacewalker too. That's a fun one. Oh, so many planes and so little time, man. Wish I could have them all. That chaos, though, is seriously tempting. Seriously tempting. 300 bonus points right now on that bad boy, too. That bird flew so good. I'll never forget. Man, I'll never forget that plane. I had a Batman in mine. I think I still have the fuselage, actually, somewhere. Huh. That's a sweet bird. I have to give me another nitro plane. I'll, maybe that's what I'll do is get a nitro plane and start building on the show every week. That's what I should do. You said A main has some wings? No way, man. For the big 30cc one? I gotta check that out because I'm getting them right now if they do. I need those so bad. Yeah, I'm on Tower Hobby. Yeah. Next week I'll have this thing set up so you guys can see what I'm looking at. But yeah, I'm on Tower Hobby right now. I used to order everything from Tower, man, back in the day. Like everything. Now I get a lot of stuff at uh, Horizon. But Horizon owns Tower. I mean, it all goes to the same spot. But. Gator Hobby? No, I'm on uh, Tower right now. I haven't looked at Gator, actually. Tower was it? I got you. Yeah, Tower, man, that was always my go-to back in the day, was Tower. That's where I went for everything. They had so much cool stuff back then. I mean, they still do, but some of the old stuff was awesome. Yeah, Tim Smith, yeah, it's all you used to order from also. Same here, dude. I love Tower. Yeah, they did, Wild Bill. Yeah, they had like a Sears-like catalog. Yeah, you're right. I still have some of them in my... I, I still have some in my collection, dude, of the old, the, old, the old magazines. I have to remember to bring one on the show one night. It was awesome. That magazine was so awesome. I mean, every it was like super thick, too. Yeah, it was like a big catalog. And that was like when you could still call in your orders. I don't even think you can call in orders anymore. Now oh, in back order, Mike Nolan. Hey, man, at least I know where to find them. Man, they're only 125 bucks too. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. I wonder when they're coming off back order. Wish it would give me a darn date. 
I need those. Paul McNeil said he still uses Tower Hobbies. Oh, you did just toss them out? Wow, duh, that's crazy. That's pretty cool, though. Man, I miss those days. That was awesome. You used to get the big catalogs. Man. I need to grab something to drink. Give me one second. Drinking water instead of Pepsi tonight because if I drink Pepsi, I won't go to sleep until like 4 in the morning. Man, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm itching for that chaos now, now that I've seen that. It's been a long time. That was such an awesome bird. Man, I'm trying to think of the other one. Oh, it's a, a, a contender. I don't know if any of you guys have ever flown a contender. That thing flew great. I don't know if they ever made them as arfs or not, but I had a kit I built, and man, that thing was sweet. The contender was awesome. That was a good flying bird, too. Yeah, to quit soda a while ago, I need to, man. I'm gaining weight like crazy. I used to be a smoker, man, so, like, when you smoke, you don't have that much of an appetite, really. And uh, ever since I quit, I eat constantly or, like, I don't know, I have cravings now and stuff. And that's all I do is gain weight, it seems like. That and since I've had a kid. <laughs> it's all that dad weight going on. Now, I'm glad you're doing good not buying any, man. Oh, come on, pups. What are you doing? What are you guys doing? Come on. <laughs> nope. My dog just let himself out. He's good at doing that. My mom used to let me order a gentle lady and two rolls of Monaco on the phone. Total was like 45 bucks. Man, isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's pretty awesome though. That's pretty awesome. I remember those days you called in your orders and stuff. Dang, Wild Bill, that's good, man. Down to 240? Holy smokes. I just keep climbing, dude. I need to, I need to cut it out. <laughs> I need to cut it out. Come on, pups. I'm going to let these guys out real quick. Give me two seconds. Come on, Amelia. Come on. Wiggle fingers, gotta head out, flying early in the morning, good fun. Keep them as long as you can. That's right, man. Well, thanks for stopping in, man. Hopefully, we'll see you next week, next weekend. Uh, we'll be popping on and off, uh, in and out live anyways. And then Saturday night, we'll do a cool show. So, But thanks for coming in, man. It was good seeing you. I'm surprised. I got on really late tonight. I'm surprised any of you guys are uh, even in here or stuck around. Thank you. The tonight's festivities went a little bit longer than anticipated, and I had to go get the kid from grandma's, so it took a little while. What's on the table? Oh, this, uh, that's Stuka. I was, uh, I took out this Futaba receiver that came with it. 
and I put in a spectrum. Uh, I had to trace down some of the wires and whatnot and figure out what was what, but I got everything plugged in the receiver. Tomorrow I got to get my spar that's in my trailer and uh, put on the wings and then kind of like go through everything and test it out. I bought it second hand and I had to I had to fix up some of it. I replaced like fuel tank, fuel line, uh, a couple other little things like linkages and whatnot, but nothing too crazy. Clean the car, but yeah, it should be in pretty good shape. I'm hoping it runs decent, so we'll see. Harbor Freight Puka. <laughs> That's right. Good old Harbor Freight. Now I got you. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, so we're having fun. Just chilling. Just chilling. Oh, I better go grab my dogs real quick. Uh, Wild Bill, he says, is this nitro? No, this isn't nitro. This is, uh, this got a 20cc DLE in it. It's a gasser. So. Should be a good one. You posted a link to some wings? Man, why don't I see it? Let me hop in on the chat on my phone and see if I see it. I just saw something for a Cirrus report. What you break on your Cirrus or Cirrus, Brian? I've seen that on old good old YouTube pop up. Dang, Mike. I, yeah, I don't see the the link, buddy. I don't know where it is. Shoot. Oh, he's got to be a moderator to post links. Interesting. How in the heck do I do that? Did I do it? I think I did it. On my phone, anyways, I think I did. Oh, the servo for the rudder and nose wheel let the smoke out? Ah, oh, dang, that sucks. Hopefully that was a simple fix, though. I don't know where that one's at on that one, if it's hard to get to or not, that servo. I think I made him a moderator now. Heck, I don't know. I'm adding a few people as moderator. I'm just curious to see if it works when you guys talk next. <laughs> Alright, so so far everybody I can see in the chat should be a moderator. Hey, there it is. Sick. It worked.
What? $71? What? On sale. They must be trying to get rid of them. Just trying to make sure it's like a legit site. GreatPlainsSale.com <laughs> It's a weird one. Yeah, hopefully all you guys are moderators now. I've been trying to figure this whole thing out. Man, some of these prices on this side are too good to be true. What is it? All just Great Plains back stock? Like, everything on here is Great Plains. That's interesting. Yeah, man, it's been real windy, right? Like, super windy, man. Has not been good for getting out and doing anything. I wanted to earlier today and just didn't have a chance. Man, I can't believe those wings are so cheap. Maybe I'll buy them through PayPal just in case the like site's sketchy. That'd be sick, though, if I fly that bad boy again. Or fly it at all. I never even got a chance to fly it. Yeah, that's what I was looking at while Bill. Yeah, he said, not a real hobby store. Careful, looks fake. Yeah, I was like trying to see. I'm like, man, looks a little sketch. If I can use PayPal, I don't mind just because I know I can get my money back. But it says they offer PayPal. I don't know. I'm always sketched out about some of these sites. There's so much stupid scam crap that goes on now. It's unbelievable. And I was trying to do some research on it. Paul McNeil said, I hope Kenny is okay. What happened to Kenny, man? Where's Kenny at? <laughs> Wings are free. Just got to get your social blood sample and <laughs> hook up with the Nigerian prince. Well, right on, man. That's all I got to do for some free wigs. I'm down. I'm down. Go down to contact us. They have a shop front. Okay. Oh, they're out of New York, are they? I'm going to have to give them a call. That's the only thing I find weird is they, you can email them, but they don't have like a stupid phone number where I can call somebody? Come on, man. Interesting. I'll have to contact them and see what's what's good. Probably someone on RC groups has probably used them before, too, if they're legit. I'll have to put a feeler out. Yeah, Paul, I know how that goes, man. 
I know how that goes. How far is Birmingham from you? Is that a pretty good drive? <laughs> Sorry, my dog's here. Someone that the neighbors and they're going nuts. We'll probably wrap it up here in another few minutes. A little past one already. And I know my little man will have me up early in the morning. Man, my, my kid is literally like clockwork. He's up at like 6 a.m. like every morning and wired. Then he gets a bottle and he'll mess around for like an hour and then he's back to nap time. But from what I've heard, I'm in the easy stages right now, so I guess I'll take it. Thanks, Wild Bill, man. I appreciate it, man. You too, buddy. Hopefully you get out and do some flying, man. I think I'm going to wrap it up here pretty quick also. It's about that time. Dang, the ESC fried and you're serious on takeoff? That's a bummer. You know, I don't hear that happening to too many, uh, was it, hold on, I guess I was, I was about to assume. I was going to say, I, I don't hear that happening to too many E-flights. Was it an E-flight or was it like the poopy Dynam series? Because if it was the Dynam one, then I could understand that because I've had many of those go out on me and my GV caught fire midair and went, <laughs> went down because of that. Ah, four-hour motorcycle ride for you? That makes sense. That makes sense. That's a pretty badass motorcycle, though. I do like that motorcycle. You actually, you fit quite a bit of stuff on that thing. Oops. Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> my fault. I was just trying to add some stuff here and I screwed it up. Oops. Smoke is a feature on Dynam. That's right, dude. It, it looks cool until it doesn't. <laughs> looks pretty cool until you're calling the fire department to put out the damn field in the middle of the school parking lot. Oh, the E-Flight, Fred? I'm shocked, man. I, I, you know, I haven't had any issues with E-Flight, actually. I Knock on marble. That's, uh... Or wood, there's some wood, yeah. Uh, I haven't had any issues with E-Flight, luckily. Dynam, yikes. The old FMS stuff, like the super old FMS stuff, I had some issues with those, but... Like, I'm talking like 10, 11 year, years ago old FMS stuff, but since then I haven't had any issues. Just check the site... It's from 2019. Other sites are saying wings are discontinued. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to, uh, I'm probably going to pop on some of those because I need those wings bad. I have not been able to find them anywhere, and the one I, I screwed up is trash. I could have attempted to rebuild it, but I'd never get it to look the same. If I can get away with just taking the servos out, throwing them in some new wings, I'd be down for that. I 
saw a guy on Facebook Marketplace actually that's only about a two hour drive for me. He's got the whole plane, but I don't know if he's selling it or not because it said that he's looking for a cowl and a canopy. So I don't know if he's selling it or if he's just trying to find parts for it. So I would have bought the whole darn plane if I could have just so I had it, but it was a bummer, man. I had that plane, it was brand new, built it sat forever and then I never got to fly and I put a darn car right through the wing of it. <laughs> It'll happen though. Darn shenanigans. Darn shenanigans. That's the one thing I do miss having that warehouse to have fun in. That was a good time. Me and Ryan did some pretty fun shenanigans in that thing. Especially when it was like just Dynam planes and it was like empty in the center and all the Dynam products was on the outside of it. It was a pretty, pretty fun little place to have some fun at. But anyhow, folks, it's 108. I think I'm going to wrap it up here in a second. I appreciate all you guys stopping by and having some fun and talking some airplanes and yeah, it was a good time. I enjoy my Saturday evenings with you all. So like I said, next week though, we're going to be going live quite a bit. And uh, next Saturday night, I'll be live for sure from the field. I'm going to try to have all this set up too and the good camera out there as long as I can get a decent internet connection so we can kind of like actually film and watch stuff. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Backflip and sentence inside will break shit. That's true. That is true. We found that out. <laughs> we have found that out. I found that out the hard way, but that was a good time. That sentence, what got me hooked on cars, was that, that was a fun little one. I don't have a whole lot of cars left anymore. I got rid of a lot of mine. I got crawl like I like crawling so much. I still got quite a few crawlers, but as far as fast stuff, I don't have a ton of fast stuff anymore. Just a few. I got my, what the hell is that thing called, the big Traxxas one, not the X-Max, the other one. And then I got uh, the Arma, little Arma deal, Vortec or whatever the hell that thing's called, but other than that I don't have a whole lot anymore. Just aeroplanes. I want to make a tug still though for the planes, I think that'd be pretty cool. Ah, Fred, he said, I thought it was, it was the battery, but when I found the ESC was smoked and the canopy and receiver melted and battery was intact. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. I, uh, I mean, it happens. I mean, I, I mean, you gotta think they're producing hundreds of those things, you know? Um, you're gonna have one here or there that might be bad, you know? It happens. It happens. Part of manufacturing, unfortunately. But yeah, that's crazy. E-Flight's usually pretty darn solid. But, alright folks, well I think I am out of here for tonight. It's 111, so like I said, don't forget to uh, pop on in next week. And then I'm going to try to get that darn EC1500 film, so hopefully I'll have a new video out uh, tomorrow night or sometime during the week for you guys to watch until... Get you by until uh, Birmingham. But, uh, oh, and then I got another new plane at Birmingham. I won't say what it is, but there's one waiting for me down there. So I'll do some video and fly that bad boy too. So, yeah. But other than that, thank you all for stopping in. And hopefully we'll see you next weekend. So, yeah, have fun. Get out, do some flying. And we'll see you guys later. Peace.